I'm Atuba Judge, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Are you ready now? Let's call for... I'm expecting a miracle today, praise God. I don't, I don't know about you, but join me to believe a miracle will happen today. Are you ready? Say this with me. Say, Father, I receive today, this Friday, praise God, my daily bread. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. And it's yours in Jesus' name. Amen. Now let's look at what we've been looking at. We're talking about things concerning our salvation. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. I declare burdens are being lifted right now. As your knowledge is being poured out into your children. Every body in their life is lifted. Every yoke right now is destroyed. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We receive life from you, Lord. We receive life from you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Now, we, we, we're in John chapter 15. And we're looking at, okay, if any man being Christ, he's a new creation. That's, that's what I'm explaining to you. And I said, the Holy Spirit is what made us a new creation. Because now, now we are spirits having a soul living in a body. Now, what does the Holy Spirit do? He connects us to the vine. And that's why we got to John chapter 15. And then we, we began to read in verse 4. It says, abide in me. And I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except you abide in me. You can't bear fruit on your own, except you abide in me. Now, there are people who, um, they come to God. See, anybody who can receive anything from God when they ask. And it depends on how persistent you are. Jesus spoke about the, the, the wicked, the unjust judge. He said, the woman, look, though he didn't respect anybody, but because this woman is troubling him, and he now said, the same way God will avenge anyone who cried to him night and day. Meaning, if you go before God and you are persistent, you can get anything you want from God. It doesn't necessarily mean that he is pleased giving that thing to you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's why Jesus, after that whole story, made a very powerful statement in, in, that's in Luke chapter 18. He says, nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? That's a very powerful statement that people have not looked at. Why tell us this wonderful story on how we can trouble God and get what we want? And then you now end it by saying, nevertheless, now, what, what do you mean, nevertheless? It's English. He said, put this aside. If the Son of Man comes, will he find people walking in faith? Meaning, will he find people who trust him and knows that he has their life plan and he's doing something about their lives? Or will he just find people who are ready to beat, beat everything out of God and get something from him? See, so when he says, abide in me, verse 4, John 15, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abides in the vine. So I was saying, you can go to God and you, you see, what God does then is he, he gives you grace or he gives you the anointing. And with that anointing, you can do a lot of things, but it doesn't mean you bear fruit. Fruit is the identity of the vine. Yeah. Fruit is identity of the vine. 
It's not everything an anointed man do does that is a fruit. But fruit is actually the identity of the vine. So I told you the other day, the, the disciples said, it was yesterday, yeah? the disciples said, look, let's call them fire like Elijah. And Jesus said, no, we don't, because that's not the kind of spirit that we have received. Meaning, Elijah called them fire, but that was not the fruit of God. But he did. And God supernaturally answered him. But that was not God for you. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, some time ago we talked about angels. See, these are things people don't know. Angels. Now, now, as a as a as a minister, as one who's called, not just in ministry, in everything, as one who is called and sent by God, there are specific angels that have been released to follow you. And the funny thing about those angels is this: angels study your pattern and they walk with you according to your pattern. I'm telling you the truth. Angels study your pattern. They study your personality. And they walk with you according to your personality. If you, are, if you are one who's always angry, always, you know, always ready to spark, always ready to call, you will notice that, I mean, it, that's why some of the people call fire. Fire will actually come. It's not because God released those, that fire in heaven. No, the angels that's walking with you. That's the kind of person you are. So they bring down the fire as you asked for. Even though you will give account of that fire. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You will give account of that fire. You will. <laughs> know it today that you will. <laughs> Praise God. So, so, because you want it, the angel have been sent to help you in every way to fulfill your, work, your calling or your ministry. So if someone is obstructing your calling, the angel can go any length to bring them down. Not because that's what God will do. But those actions are an indication of what is coming out from you. The kind of fruits you're bearing. Now that's how you know, Elijah got to call down fire from heaven and fire truly came. And you find Jesus coming to say, that's not who we are. So we don't call them fire like that to burn people because they did not obey us. No, we don't. Praise God. There's another way to do it. There's another way to get things done. That's what Jesus was saying. Praise God. Now he says, you cannot do anything except you abide in me. Now verse 5 says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abided in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Watch what he said in verse 6. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch. He is cast forth as a branch and is withered. Now, the moment he is cast forth as a branch. Now, he was a branch before. Now, this is Jesus speaking. If a man abides not in me now he used the word abide meaning you were connected to him but you didn't stay now that's to tell you that you have a choice even though the holy spirit have connected you as a branch to this vine you have a choice to stay connected or to disconnect you have a choice you know sometimes people just feel it's, it's a lazy man's gospel. There is nothing we can do for God have saved us. So there is nothing we can do to undo the salvation that God have done for us. You know, when I hear such people, the first question I ask, to ask is, you need to be sure first, are you saved? That's the first question to ask yourself. Are you saved? Because if you are really saved, you see this thought you're thinking, you will not be thinking it. You are just a legalistic person who's, who's, who's claiming salvation by the books. You have not experienced salvation yet. I'm telling you the truth. When you hear people talk like that, they've not experienced salvation. If you have experienced salvation, and you are living in salvation. There are some things that cannot come out of your mouth. 
not, not because you are afraid, but because you see, you see the workings of this thing. And, and, and like, like he said here, this is Jesus now. If a man abide not in me, is it possible? What happens? He is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are born. Now he says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Remember what he said in verse 3. He said, you are pruned through the words that I have spoken unto you. So he speaks words to you so that you will be pruned to bear more fruits. Now, as you bear more fruits, now he comes and says, if, if you abide in me and my words abide, abide in you those teachings that he discussed with you when they abide in you how, how do you know the word of god is abiding in you when the word of god that he has spoken to you begin to frame your reasoning begin to frame your thoughts begin to frame your actions that's how you know one whom the word is abiding in so everything that he teaches you, he is watching you to see how it will abide in you. How do I know that now I have received the word of God and is abiding in me by the thoughts and decisions that go through my mind? Are you getting what I'm saying? For example, you know, in this broadcast, I told you the Lord said, spoke to me, he said, from henceforth, Every time before you start the broadcast, you must lead my children to make demand for their daily bread. Now, the Lord said that to me. Now, what happened? Now, we were already in the broadcast. And then he says, hey, I need to prune this broadcast. It's okay, so what do we do? He brought his word. He brought his teachings. And then he explained to me why. I said, okay. And then he gave me an instruction. All right. Now, no matter how what revelation I have in my spirit to share with you. The moment we start, I remember his words. I said, no, we can't go on without doing this. What is that? His word is abiding in me. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, you are seeing the result of my action. And then you're wondering, why does he always pray like this? Then I'm now telling you that it is the word of God that came to me. So I allow his word to abide in me. And guess what? Now, me, testimonies are coming from these already. See, so when I hear those testimonies, now those are the kind of fruits that that particular word pruned me or pruned this broadcast to bring forth. Are you getting what I'm saying? So people were getting blessed before, but now there's a new dimension of, of blessings and testimonies we are receiving. See, more fruit. So everything you are doing for the Lord, he comes to inspect and then he gives you words where that thing is concerned. Now, when you allow that word sink inside of you, you may be in ministry. No, you, may, you may not, you know, the, the word is for everybody. You may be bearing fruits at work, you know, and then because you're concerned, concerning bearing fruits. And then the Lord speaks to you and says, from henceforth, Whenever you go to the office, I want you to go earlier to work and spend five or ten minutes praying for your organization before work starts at eight o'clock or at seven o'clock. Okay, Lord. Okay. And he will tell you for that. He said, because there is something I want to do in that your place of work. Okay. So you take that word. And now you are just getting lazy. And hey, I've got to go to work early. Because I've got to pray for 10 minutes before work starts. Hey, you, you start rushing. Now, what's going on? You have allowed the word to abide in you. So it's influencing your action. Now. Someone sees you, you're getting, you're, you're rushing, getting to work, trying to go to work early. And someone says, hey, I noticed these days you come to work very early before everybody. Why? The word of God is abiding in you. Are you seeing how it works? So he brings his word to you so that you bear fruit. Now, you have to allow that word to abide inside of you. Now, the problem is now when that kind of word is not coming to you. Now, if that word is not coming to you, then you should be concerned. Am I a branch? Am I 
bearing fruit? Because if you're not bearing fruit, no word, he doesn't owe you any word. What, what's he giving his word for? He's giving his word so you bear more fruit. Already you are connected, so you should begin to bear fruit. But you see, when he sees that you're bearing fruit, that's when he comes to prune you so that you will not begin to bear more fruit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, our time is up for today. Praise God. We're going to continue this next week. But I pray for you right now. That your life as a branch will begin to indeed reflect the vine. And I pray that every fruit that he has intended for you to bear, it's coming. You are bringing them forth. In the name of the Lord Jesus, a pruning is taking place. Your heart is open to receive his word. Your heart is open to receive his truth. Your heart is open to receive discussions from the spirit of God now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Have the best weekend ever. I'll see you on Monday. Bye-bye.